We want to welcome all of our visitors today. And uh, in the back of the seat, right in front of you, there is a card that looks just like this. It's very simple, just a few questions that is on the back. But we'd like for you to fill that card out for us if you would. And that way we can have a record of your visit. So if you don't care to do that for us, would you fill that card out and you can give it to myself or my wife right here on the front as you go out the back door. So you can give it to us and we'll make sure that gets to the right place. But we want to say to all of our visitors, thank you for being here. God bless you. Make yourself uh, right at home today. And I'm sure uh, that these folks will welcome you here in just a moment. Um, also in the back, there is a card that looks like this. You probably can't see that from here, but it is a little card. It's a little witnessing card. And uh, you can take those with you. They're back there for you. And uh, when you're at the grocery store or you're at the... Uh, Walmart or you're at the hospital wherever you're at if you talk to somebody and they say well where do you go to church well give them this little card it gives all the information about the church even the phone number but on the back is the Romans Road to Salvation so uh, make sure you take those cards there's some back there today some of you asked me about that so they're back there so get those and um, I know the Lord will bless you for giving those out well let's all stand this morning and we're going to read together out of the book of Acts, out of the book of Acts, and we're going to talk about two miracles there in chapter 9, and Aeneas and Tabitha, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning, and um, it's a very unique story, uh, uh, a story where, like I said, there's two miracles, and uh, we're going to break down those miracles this morning and look at them because they are worth doing. And ask the question. And, and the question is, God, do I matter? Do I matter to you, God? And of course, everybody knows the answer. What's the answer to that? Yes. Yes. And you that come to church know that. But there's a lot of people that may be watching me today and a lot of people maybe even here this morning that you just think you don't matter. But I'm here to tell you, you matter a whole lot to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. And I want you to understand that. And I want us to see that in these two miracles today. Let's read together out of Acts chapter 9. We're going to go from verse 32 uh, down to verse 42. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia, and there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydia and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha which by interpretation is called Dorcas. The woman was full of good works and alms deed, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and she died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And forasmuch as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning uh, him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lift her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Father. You're good to us this morning, and we thank you for your precious word. And we ask this morning, Father, that you will help us to understand, give us wisdom in teaching and preaching the word that only comes from you. I can't do this myself. I need you, Father. 
So I ask you to use me this morning to preach your word and teach your word. Now, Father, thank you for all that have come today. We pray for all of those that are on vacation, all of those that are traveling this morning. I pray, God, that you'll be with them and take care of them, help them to have a great vacation, bring them home safe. But, Father, this morning, help us. Help us to understand you. Help us to, Lord, be different because we've heard your word. And, Father, we'll praise you forevermore for what you do because you're a good God and you're good to us. And in your name we pray these things. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, now go to somebody and tell them you love them this morning. Meet our visitors this morning. are serving the Lord right now in many different ways. I was thinking about this as I was getting this message together that our country is so blessed with so many places that we can go to and worship the Lord. In a lot of countries we don't have or they don't have what we do. And to come to church a lot of people will say well you know preacher when we come to church, you know, we sing and we preach and we go home. But you know what? That's exciting to me. I enjoy hearing the singing. I enjoy hearing the preaching and the teaching. Because we learn something about Jesus. One preacher said that, well, there's nothing that hasn't been preached. And that's the truth. But you know what? I still like to hear it be preached, don't you? I still like to hear what God has to say. It doesn't matter that, you know, every time I read the Bible, and I, I've read it many, many times, uh, there's not really a day that goes by that I don't read my Bible and study my Bible, but it, it's an amazing thing that God always teaches us something different. And this goes to show you how alive God's Word is, that His Word is alive and well. And that if you ever need to know something, if you ever are going through something in your life, some trouble, heartache, whatever it may be, if you'll get in the Word, God will speak to you. It's an amazing thing. This Word is a lie. Same thing happened this week as I was studying on this. God, do I really matter? I've, I've heard a lot of things over the last year. It just seems like that this uh, last year, you know, and I'm even going back to 217, that this last few months have been really hard. I've never seen so, many, so much pain and suffering. I've never seen so many people sick, critically sick, as I have in this last few months. Uh, people that we love, people that we adore, that have gone on to be with Jesus, that are not with us anymore in this congregation. They are now in the congregation of heaven with Jesus. And... To think that, that studying the Bible and knowing the Bible, that this is real. That what has happened to these folks, they have really gone to heaven. They're really there this morning. And one of these days, we're going to be there. But while we're here, God still wants to teach us. And God still wants to help us to mature and help us to grow through His Word. So that's the reason we come to church. We come to church to fellowship, but we come to church to grow, to mature, to flourish, for God to give us something. And so this morning, I want to talk about this subject of God, do I matter? You see, I am who I am, and you are who you are, because God sovereignly and directly created us to be who we are. Each and every individual in this church this morning, listen to me. God created you to be who he wants you to be. 
Now, sometimes we can uh, not let the Lord use us the way He wants to and, and, and put us in the ministry that He wants to put us in because we hinder the work of God in our lives. Now, maybe some of you this morning are hindering the work of God in your life. Can I tell you this morning, people matter to God. You, look at me, you matter to God this morning. He knows you personally. And he loves you this morning. I like what one preacher said about this. He said, for many people, life is a disposable commodity thrown out when inconvenient or costly, whether that life is a fetus or a grandparent or even their own. And that's the truth. We have become a society that cares nothing about life. Matter of fact, that's the reason you're seeing so many uh, shootings and you're seeing so many police officers and uh, uh, public servants being shot and being killed because life has become, uh, you know, that it's not important. But I'm here to tell you it is important and your life is important to God when we think this way that life isn't important, it's such a tragic thing. Not only because it leads to abortion, it leads to uh, the, you know, a, a, a rush to euthanasia, and, and we have that now. I mean, it just leads to all kinds of things when we think that life is not important. I'm here to tell you it is. You know, this is a paralyzing epidemic, epidemic in our society. It really is. This country is in an epidemic, epidemic because we think that life is not important. That life doesn't matter. But I'm here to tell you it does. People are not worthless. People are important. People are what God uses to change this world and to change people around you. And you're that very vessel that God wants to use this morning. So in saying all that and looking at this story, I want to talk about, first of all, these two miracles. The two miracles that happen here. In this passage, Dr. Luke uh, is the, in his narrative here, and he abruptly shifts. He shifts from Saul, and now he goes to Peter. And uh, we find Peter in this scripture, he's doing ministry like he's always done. He's going from town to town and he's preaching and he's teaching. And he's now in the western part of Israel. And he's there doing what he's always done, teaching and preaching the Bible. He goes, though, predominantly uh, to the Gentile towns. The Bible even talks about this here in Acts chapter 9. It says he went uh, to Lydia and to Joppa. And there he starts ministering the gospel to these Jewish believers and uh, he's telling them about Jesus Christ. He's telling them what Jesus can do in their life. In the first town, which is uh, uh, when we find in this first town, Peter goes to this handicapped man. Now this man had been handicapped for a long time. He was really a man that was, uh, if you really want to put it, he was not really good for society. He could not do anything for society, and that's what God is speaking of here. All he could do is really just sit. He, he couldn't do anything. But Peter went to him because Jesus moved him in that area, and he healed him through the power of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that this man was immediately made whole. Now what that means is, is everything about him was made new. That his health was given back to him. That he was as healthy as he was when he was a young man. That he could do the things that he could do as a young man. He was completely and immediately healed of his illness. Then the Bible says in the second town, in the second town, as Peter was uh, preaching there, there was a funeral party there. Uh, they were uh, grieving the loss of a godly woman named Tabitha. Now, this beloved woman had given herself to serve 
the poor, uh, the widows uh, of Joppa. And, and in turn, uh, she was the one that did a lot of ministry. So when Peter came to town and saw uh, this, this funeral service, this, this, uh, this place of going to bury her, they appealed to Peter on her behalf. All the people ran to him and said, you got to do something. This woman is one of us. This woman has helped us. This woman is a servant of Jesus Christ, and you've got to help us. So following in Jesus' footsteps, whom Peter had seen Jesus raise uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead in Mark chapter 5, verse 35, he did the same thing that Jesus did. Peter prayed over Tabitha's dead body. And you know what happened? God raised her from the dead. I mean, this woman had been dead. I'm talking about no life, no breath, no heartbeat. She was dead. And the Bible says that these women were crying over her being a servant of Jesus Christ and doing the things that, that God wanted her to do. And, and Peter laid his hand on her and started praying over her. And the Bible says that life entered into her again. These are two mighty miracles here in Acts chapter 9. And they teach us an important truth this morning. What do they teach us, preacher? Well, they teach us, first of all, that Jesus was fulfilling his earlier promise to the disciples. Do you remember what that was? He told them, he said, I'm going to leave, but you're going to receive power on high. And you're going to do things that I didn't do. Listen to what the Bible says about this in Acts 1.8. It says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. And then look at, look, look at Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Jesus told these disciples, Peter being one of them, he, he told them that they would do even greater works than he had done while he was on this earth. I know that's hard for us to believe, but that's what God said. That's what he told them. And you know what? Peter believed them. Peter believed that God could work through him, that God could do things through him. He knew it wasn't him, but he knew it was God. How many of you know God is still powerful today? And God is here this morning. I don't know what your need is. I don't know where you are at. But I'm here to tell you, we serve a powerful God. This, this last thing. He said they would do greater works than he had done. Listen to John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he believeth on me. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And what does the rest of that say? And greater works than these shall he do. So these miracles, first of all, teach us that these disciples would do greater works and have power from on high. They teach us that God's power flows through those. God's power flows through those. That give God the glory. You watch all these people on TV. And you hear the things that they say they do. But the main thing you need to understand. And the main thing you need to look at. Who do they give the glory for that? Because if they don't give God the glory. Then they're wrong. It's easy to understand. That these disciples knew, and Peter knew, and he gave God the glory. So first of all, they teach us that God would give them power. The second thing I believe they teach us is that Peter was an, indeed God's instrument. You say, how do you know that? Well, we read his later writings, and we know that his writings can be trusted, that they were inspired by the Holy Ghost, and that he was set apart from God. They teach us that God is capable of healing the sick. 
They also teach us that God is capable of raising the dead. When doing so, if it fits his sovereign purposes. You see, I don't know why God doesn't heal everybody. I do know this. It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the what? Listen to me, look at me. We're all going to die. Including me. One of these days... One of these days, I won't be here. And one of these days, you won't be here. You see, we need to understand this morning, we're going to die. It's not the question of dying. Is everybody with me? The question is how we die. I'm glad this morning I know Jesus Christ. Because if I drop dead right now, I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven to be with Jesus. So they teach us that God is capable of healing the sick and raising the dead. But I believe the main point of this passage this morning, now stay with me just just a minute, has to do not with who gets God's miracle, but with who matters to God. Do you matter to God? God, Does God know you? Does he know your name this morning? You see, it's a startling contrast here between the two people. We see two people and they receive God's grace, but we see two totally different people, just like in our world, just like in our time. You see, what we try to do with people is we try to put them in categories. We try to put them in places that we think they should be. But I'm here to tell you that God doesn't do that. God doesn't put you in a place because of who you are or what you are or what you have. God puts you in the place of saved or lost. And the only way you're saved is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And He loves you all the same. And it's shown here in this story. You say, how, how in the world is it shown here? Well, on one hand, you have Aeneas. Aeneas is a lonely cripple. And on the other hand, you have Tabitha. She's beloved. Everybody loves Tabitha. Everybody wants Tabitha around. Everybody, do, uh, they don't want to lose her because she's a servant of God. It shows us in this world that sometimes we ask the question, God, why would you take her? God, why'd you take him? God, he's doing a lot of things. He, and she's doing a lot of things. She's, she's been a lot of places. She, she helps you, Lord. She's a servant, Lord. And, and then we look at uh, Aeneas, and, uh, and he couldn't do anything. He couldn't get up to help anybody. He couldn't feed anybody. He couldn't go to the clothing store and take clothing out and help people. He couldn't do anything. But God loved him as much as he loved Tabitha. It's not what you can do. It's who you know. Do you know Jesus this morning? I'm not talking about knowing about him. There's a lot of people know about Jesus. When Peter was going around doing this, what he was doing, healing these people, listen, it wasn't about Peter, it was about Jesus. He was showing people who Jesus really is. And I think that's what's happened to our society today. I think that we're good about worshiping Jesus and coming and getting happy about Jesus and getting happy about what Jesus does. But I think we lack in showing who Jesus is outside of the walls of the church. Who is Jesus to you? What does he mean to you? I can tell you what he means to me. He saved my life. 
He's everything to me. But some people just don't seem to get happy over that anymore. They're not happy over being saved. They're not happy over being washed clean and made whole and ready for heaven. God has done a miracle in your life. He has washed you and made you whole. If the rapture happened today because of what Jesus has done in your life, you'd go to heaven. Not many people happy over that anymore. So on one hand, there was a man that couldn't do anything for Jesus. He just sat around. He was a burden to society. Now don't look at me like that. I'm just telling you what I see in this scripture. He had had to have somebody to help him. I remember when my mother got sick, and I love my mother and my sisters are here, and they, they know what I'm talking about. But you know what? When somebody is sick, it takes a lot. Is anybody with me? To take care of that person. And we loved our mother, and we took care of our mother. She was very well taken care of. But can I stand up here and say that it wasn't hard? No. It was very hard. It was very, very hard. Would I do it again? Yes, I would. Mom got to a place in her life. Look at me. Mom got to a place in her life, just like you know what I'm going to say because you were there with your parents and some of you know what I'm talking about. Mom got to a place in her life to where she didn't want to be here anymore. Is anybody with me? She didn't want to be here. You want to know why? Because she knew that she could never do for herself again. And she was ready to go to heaven. Aeneas was the same way. He couldn't do anything for himself. Matter of fact, society looked at him and said he's a strain on society. He's a strain on everybody that's around him. And it'd be better, society thought in their own mind, it'd be better if he just went on and died. Anybody with me? But God said, no. It wouldn't be better. And what I'm going to do for him is going to be a miracle. I'm going to heal him. And make him like a little kid again. He's going to be as healthy as a young man. Now that's a God I serve. You say, do you believe that? With all my heart. Society said he's not worth it. God said he's very worth it. And I'm here to tell you, society in your eyes may think you're not worth it. But God says you're very worth it. And I love you. Look at me. He loves you. He cares about you, a lonely cripple. But then now, on the other hand, you have Tabitha, a beloved servant. I mean, she was one of those that they didn't think they could live without. She was active. You see, Aeneas was, a, was passive, but Tabitha was active. Aeneas received help, but Tabitha gave help. Aeneas was tolerated as a taker. Tabitha was nothing but a giver. But she died. And in this world, as they were concerned about either one of them, if you would have put them side by side... The world would have said, let Aeneas die. Get him out of here. But we'll keep Tabitha. You know, church, listen to me this morning. The reason I said all that is sometimes we get like that. Sometimes the church is like that. And can I say this morning, it hurts God when we get that way. Look at me. Life 
matters to God. Your life matters to God. So in saying that, I want to say this. What are you doing with your life? You say, well, preacher, I, I, I'm, I'm older now, and I've done all that I need to do. And I would say to you, that's a lie from a pit of hell, and you better get over that. As long as you've got breath in you, and as long as God has given you life, look at me, you give your life back to God. When we stop giving our life back to God, we stop living. You say, well, that stuff's for these young couples now and these young people. They, they, need, they need to take up the slack, you know, where we left off. That's a lie from a pit of hell. And a lot of Christians, older Christians, senior saints, I'm speaking to you right now. You may run me off after this, but I'm speaking to you right now. A lot of you senior saints, the devil has sold you a bill of goods that you're not any good anymore. That we don't need you anymore. That you can't be used anymore. Look at me. That's a lie from hell. As long as you've got breath in you, you need to be doing something for God. Whether it's writing cards, poor old Marty, she wrote cards to everybody, didn't she? We need somebody to pick up that slack, by the way. Marty has been, she's in heaven. She can't write you any cards anymore. Amen? She's seeing the one she wrote those cards about. But somebody needs to take her place. I didn't hear any amens right there. Because we need you. Your life matters. God's not through with you. You young married couples, listen to me. Don't you get lazy on God. You want to know why sometimes you're so unhappy? Now, I might make you mad, but you'll be all right. Why you're so unhappy sometimes is because you get out of being the servant that you're supposed to be. And you need to get busy. I didn't have time to be unhappy when I was young. And they're there, they can tell you. Me and Terry went all the time. We were going all the time with the church. I mean, church, 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 church. And somebody said, I just get so tired of just doing everything and going everywhere and being everywhere and doing everything. Hogwash. That's a lie from a pit of hell. Well, I got my kids. I got to take my kids. We took our kids with us. But we went. Oh, but it's just busier than it used to be. No, it's not. Don't give me that. I raised three kids myself. I know. The devil has sold you a lie and you're sitting around and you're just swiveling up because you're not letting God use you. Get busy! And if you don't want to use your talent, just come on up here this morning. We'll pray that God will give it to somebody else. Let's just do it. Somebody will want to use your talent. Don't do that. Get busy, young couples. You want to get happy? You want to be happy? Be busy in the Lord. You won't have time to be unhappy. We got all kinds of things to do. Just get busy. Because why? Because you matter to God. God loves you. And God wants to do something with you. With you. Lord Jesus, I love you. And Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you do for us. I thank you for how good you've been to us. I thank you that we all matter. It doesn't matter what we are, what physical shape we're in. If we're yours, we matter. And Lord, I pray this morning that you will bless us and help us to understand that we need to get busy for you. There's people right now, this morning, that you have been dealing with. 
that this message was for them. They thought that they were unimportant, but they're not. And right now, right now in this service this morning, they need to make a commitment to you. They need to come to this altar this morning and make a commitment, not in their seats, but right here at this altar. Lord, I'm here to serve you. Young couples, you need to come and hold hands and tell the Lord you'll serve him for the rest of your life. You need to do that. Seniors, you need to come and tell the Lord that you're not going to sit around anymore, that you're going to serve, that you're going to get to writing cards and loving on these people that God has given us. Life is short. It's just a vapor that lasts for a little while and then it's gone. And we got to love each other. Would you come right now? People are already here. Just step out from where you are and come. Yeah, come on. Just come on. Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to love you. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to use my talent. Yes, come on. Amen. Keep coming. Keep coming. Lord, here's my family. My family is going to serve you. We're going to love you. We're going to be part of you. Would you come right now? You may be here this morning and you've never been saved. And the Lord is dealing with you on salvation. I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are and come right now. I'm going to show you in the Word of God how to be saved. Would you come right now? Come on. We're right here. Come on.